Hello guys! So welcome to the second part ng ating video about the design of doubly reinforced beams. So in this video, we are going to solve our example problem para sa design ng doubly reinforced beams. So this is the problem guys. So babasahin ko muna and then we are going to solve this. So take note that this problem is an SI problem. So we will be using the NSCP 2015 for this problem. Okay, so if M sub U is equals to 1,225 kN, design the beam with dimension shown. Should compression steel be required, assume that it will be placed 70 mm from the compression phase. F sub C prime is 21 megapascal and F sub Y is 420 megapascals. Okay guys, so ito nga yung ating given guys. No? So bali, no, meron tayong dimensions na ng ating beam. So ang kailangan na lang natin malaman since nagdi-design ka tayo is kailangan natin malaman kung ilang bars ang ilalagay natin sa ating uh, tension side and ilang bars yung ating ilalagay sa ating compression side. Okay, so kung sakali guys na i-design natin siya as singly then wala tayong compression bars no pero kung magdi-design tayo as doubly then ilalagay natin siya sabi nga sa problem at 70 mm from the compression phase so dito natin siya ilalagay okay so let's solve this problem guys so ang una nating gagawin of course is ilista natin muna yung ating mga given Okay, so of course, given nga guys yung ating F sub C prime, that is the strength of concrete, which is 21 megapascal. F sub Y is also given, this is 420 megapascal. Yung ating width ng ating beam is B, that is 350 millimeters. Ito nga yun. Yung ating D, which is the effective depth, is 700 millimeters. Yung ating D prime, distance ng ating compression bars from the compression phase, is 70 millimeters. And of course, given yung ating factored moment, which is M sub U, and that is 1,225 kilonewton meter. Okay, so ang una natin gagawin, guys, no? is kailangan natin uh, i-compute yung ating required nominal moment, that is M sub N. So, para makompute natin si M sub N, we will use the equation M sub U is equals to phi M N. So, of course, lagamitin natin dito yung phi na equals to 0.90 because nagdi-design tayo and we want our beam to become tension controlled. So, isi-set natin siya muna as tension controlled. Okay, so bali no, i-compute natin ngayon guys yung ating M sub N. So, take note that M sub U is already given, that is 1,225. So, M sub N natin is 1,300. 61.11 kilonewtons. Okay, so bali no, uh, after natin makompute ang M sub N, we now have to find out whether i-design natin yung beam as singly or doubly reinforced beam. So, i-design ba natin yung beam as singly or doubly? Siyempre guys, no, unahin muna natin i-find out kung uh, kasi mas mas prefer natin guys yung singly kasi mas tipid siya, di ba? So, kung kakayanin ng beam as singly, di singly natin siya i-design. Pero kung hindi kakayanin ng ating uh, ma ng maximum nominal moment, di ba, na-discuss na natin siya sa nakaraang video. Kung hindi kakayanin ng maximum nominal moment ng singly, di kailangan natin siyang i-design as doubly reinforced beam. Okay, so, ayun. So, ang gagawin natin para ma-design natin yung beam, ma-find out natin kung i-design natin yung beam as singly or doubly, e di i-compute natin guys yung ating maximum nominal moment or that is tatawagin natin siyang MN1 if the beam will be designed as singly reinforced beam. Okay? So, bali no, ang gagawin natin dyan para makompute natin yung maximum no moment, nominal moment or MN1 is that isiset natin guys muna yung ating row that is tatawagin natin row 1 isiset natin siya to row max and then we will solve for the AS1 which is AS max. So, ito na yung maximum area ng uh, steel reinforcement para sa singly. Okay? So, ginagawa natin yan, guys, para ma-maximize natin yung ating magnitude ng tension force. Okay? And then, bali, no, after that, we will now going to compute the MN1, that is the maximum nominal moment if the beam will be designed as singly, and then, i-compare natin siya to the nominal moment. Okay? So, again, if kapag yung ating MN1 is greater than or equal sa ating nominal moment, ito yung na-compute natin kanina, guys, na MN, sa una pa lang, ito na nga yun, that is 1,361.11, no? Uh, kung yung ating MN1, ito yung maximum nominal moment kung nididesign siya singly, is greater than or equal to MN, that means kakayanin nung ating, uh, kakayanin nung singly yung nominal moment na required, okay? Pero kung yung ating MN1 is less than sa MN, then that means hindi niya kakayanin, ka, hindi kakayanin ng ating singly yung uh, nominal moment na required, so kailangan natin siyang i-design as doubly, okay? So, ayun. So, ang una natin gawin, guys, is iset natin si row 
equals to rho max. So, di ba nga guys, yung ating rho max is the rho when the tension strain is equal to 0.005. So, yung ating uh, formula para dito, no, i-present ko to sa nakaraang video, that will be equal to 0.85 multiplied by 0.003 beta 1 over 0.008 multiplied by F sub C prime divided by F sub Y. Okay, so substitute lamang natin guys yung F sub C prime at F sub Y. Meron natin siyang given sa ating problem. Yung beta 1 na lang ang kailangan natin. So, para sa beta 1, kailangan natin itong table na to from the NSCP and sabi dito yung beta 1 nga is nakadepende yung value niya sa value ng F sub C prime. So, nasan dito yung ating F sub C prime that is 21 megapascal. So, that means dito siya guys na bibilong. So, it means yung ating beta 1 is equals to 0.85. Okay. So, substitute na natin guys dito sa ating rho uh, max. Ayun. So, bali ang mangyari yung ating rho max will be 0 0.01355 and therefore di ba nga yung ating rho 1 is equals to rho max. So, therefore yung ating rho 1 is also equal to 0 0.01355. Okay. Then after that, no, kukunin natin guys yung ating AS1 using the formula na rho is equals to AS over BD. So, of course, no, yung AS uh, sa equation na to, sa formula na to, yung B at saka D at saka rho 1 ay alam na natin yung AS1 na lang yung hindi. So, direct substitution na lang. So, AS1 will be equal to 3318.98 square millimeters. So, ayun guys, no? So, ayun, so nakompute na natin yung ating AS1. So, ang gagawin natin ngayon is kailangan natin i-compute ngayon yung ating MN1. Guys, ito yung ating pinaka-target dito, no? MN1. Okay? So, gamitin muna natin guys yung ating formula para sa M sub U1 which is phi BD squared rho 1 multiplied by F sub Y multiplied by 1 minus rho 1 multiplied by F sub, C, F sub Y multiplied, uh, divided by 1.7 F sub C prime. So, ayun. So, basta na, nandito na naman yung formula. Okay. So, alam na natin yan guys no, kasi ginagamit naman natin itong formula na to noong singly reinforced beam design pa lang. Okay. So, M sub U1 direct substitution guys. Alam na natin lahat ng values na nandito given na yan sa problem and nakuha na natin siya. Okay. So, ayun. So, ang mangyayari M, M sub U1 is equals to 738.24 kilonewton meter. Okay, so take note guys, ang lalabas dito is newton millimeter, kailangan natin siyang i-convert to kilonewton meter. Okay? So M sub U1 nga is 738.24. Okay, ngayon guys, i-compute natin si MN1 using this formula again. Alam natin to, MU is equals to phi MN. So ang mangyayari, of course, yung ating phi is 0 0.90 and MN1 will be equal to 820.27 kilonewton meter. Ngayon, i-compare natin guys yung ating MN1 sa ating MN. Ilan nga yung ating MN? Yung ating MN nga is 1,361.11 kilonewton meter. And yung ating MN1 nga is, kakakompute pa lang natin, that is 820.27. Okay, so i-compare natin. Ang mangyayari is, take note that MN1 is less than sa ating MN. So it means, alin yung nangyari dito sa dalawa? It means, doubly dapat yung kanyang design. Siyempre, kasi yung topic natin is doubly reinforced beam. So, alam nga namang example to ng doubly. So, dapat doubly talaga siya. Okay? Expected na yan. Okay. So, since MN1 nga is less than MN, then the, the beam must be designed as doubly. Okay. So, now let's proceed now sa gagawin natin next. So, ano yung gagawin natin next, guys? We have to compute yung locking moment kasi di ba nga, ibig sabihin nung, M, nung kanina, no, kailangan kasi natin siyang i-design as doubly. It means na kahit i-maximize natin, guys, yung nominal moment ng singly, hindi niya kakayanin yung required na nominal moment ng ating beam. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong locking na moment at yun na nga yung MN2. Okay? So, di ba naalala ninyo itong figure na to ginamit natin to sa nakaraang video? Ayun, so, uh, yung MN1, ito na yung uh, MN1 na na-compute natin kanina. So, bali no, para makompleto yung ating MN, hindi kailangan natin ng magdagdag ng ating nominal moment at yun na yung ating tatawagin natin siyang MN2. Okay? So, from this equation, guys, MN is equals to MN1 plus MN2. Alam na natin, guys, yung ating value ng MN1 tsaka MN. Ibig sabihin nito, makukuha natin si MN2 and that will be 540.84 kilonewton meter. Okay, so take note, yung MN2 na yan, ito na yung required na nominal moment nang para sa idadagdag natin na reinforcement sa, sa tension side at saka sa compression side. Okay? So, ayun. So, bali no, ang gawin natin is 
Okay? We have to check whether yung compression steel will yield or not. No? Kasi kakailanganin natin um, gumamit nga maya ng F sub S prime. So, uh, para malaman natin kung yung F sub S prime natin will be equal to F sub Y or hindi, okay? then kailangan natin malaman kung mag yield ba yung ating compression steel or hindi. Okay, so, of course, no, para malaman natin yun, hindi i-compute natin si compression steel strain, which is epsilon, F, epsilon sub S prime. Okay, and then we will compare that to the value of the yield strain. So, okay, so kapag ka naging greater than or equal sa ating yield strain, yung ating compression steel strain, then it means yung ating compression steel will yield. So, ang ating gagamitin F sub S prime is equals to F sub Y. Pero kung yung ating compression steel strain is less than sa ating yield strain, it means that the compression steel that the compression steel will not yield so yung ating f sub s prime will not be equal to ating sa ating f sub y and therefore gagamitin i-compute natin guys yung ating f sub s prime and that should be less than sa ating f sub y okay okay so ngayon guys no kailangan natin ng strain diagram so ito yung ating strain diagram of course yung ating strain sa concrete is 0 0.003 ang tawag natin dito is the compression steel strain ito yung i-compute natin and of course ito that is the tension strain mamaya maya ay i-compute din natin ito okay so yun so ratio and proportion lamang guys so uh, kailangan natin itong mga dimensions para sa ratio and proportion okay so itong triangle na to itong malaking triangle na red is similar to this maliit na triangle na orange. So, ibig sabihin guys, by ratio and proportion, this side is to this side. So, madali lang naman, 0 0.003 divided by C is equals to itong side ng maliit na triangle is uh, com uh, compression steel strain divided by this side that is C minus D prime. Okay. So, yun nga guys, no? so, if you, uh, yung ating C, makukompute natin dito as A divided by beta 1. Okay? So, of course, yung beta 1, nakompute natin to kanina, that is 0.85. Kailangan natin ngayon, guys, ng A. That is, makukompute natin yung A as uh, using this formula na A is 1, F sub Y divided by 0.85, F sub C prime multiplied by B. Di ba nakompute natin to, guys, no? yung A is 1 kanina, F sub Y, F sub C prime, at saka B ay given sa problem. So, ayun, so makukompute natin dito, guys, si A, that is equals to 223.12 millimeters. Okay, so substitute lamang dito, guys, sa ating formula and makukuha natin si C which is 262.5 millimeters. Okay. So yun, so substitute lang din dito sa ating ratio and proportion na equation kay given naman na si D prime at si C ay nakuha na natin. So makukuha natin dito si compression steel strain that is 0 0.002200. So ayun, so yan na kayo mismo yan guys. Yan na mismo yung ating compression steel strain. So ngayon, no, kailangan natin siyang i-compare nga sa ating yield strain. So para makompute yung ating yield strain, that is simply F sub Y divided by the modulus of elasticity ng steel. So that will be equal to 0.0021. No? Take note that F sub Y natin is given, that is 420, and yung ating modulus of elasticity ng steel is 200,000 megapascal. So, of course, makukuha natin yung ating yield strain, that is 0.0021. So, ngayon nga, ay compare natin yung ating compression steel strain sa ating yield strain, katulad ng nandito sa ating uh, uh, taas, na ating video, no? Okay, so, bali, ang mangyayari dito is, of course, yung ating compression steel strain is greater than sa ating yield strain. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? So, kung greater than siya, it means, eto yun, the compression steel yields. And therefore, kapag ka nag-yield siya, yung ating gagamitin, guys, na ating F sub S prime is equal to ating F sub Y. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, guys, kung yung ating F sub Y is 420, yung ating F sub S prime must also be 420 kasi mag yield siya. Okay, so hindi, ibig sabihin guys, no, kasi may mga sudyante dito na ang ginagawa nila, kinocompute nila yung ating F, yung F sub S prime using this formula. Ang ginagawa nila is F sub uh, com compression steel strain is equals to F sub S prime divided by the modulus of elasticity. So ang mangyayari kapag ka ganun guys, yung F sub S prime will be greater than F sub Y. Hindi pwede yun guys kasi yung yield uh, strain or yung yield na stress na F sub Y, yun na mismo yung pinaka uh, malaking uh, stress sa yielding na maa-ating ng ating um, uh, 
steel bars. So, hindi pwedeng mas malaki nga yung ating F sub S prime sa ating F sub Y. So, yung limit ng ating F sub S prime is F sub Y. Okay? So, ayun nga guys, no? So, ngayon, alam na natin na yung ating compression steel will yield. So, we will now proceed to uh, computing the required compression steel area, which is yung AS prime. So, we will choose the bar diameter and compute the number of bars. Okay? So, ayun. So, from this figure, guys, alam na natin tong figure na to, no? Okay, so ang gagawin natin is i-compute muna natin guys uh, gamit itong formula na MN2 equals to CS. Uh, ito guys, no? Take note that MN2 natin is computed as T2 multiplied by D minus D prime or MN2 is equals to CS, that is compression steel na force multiplied by D minus D prime. Okay, so gamit yung formula na yan guys, now we will compute the AS prime. Di ba nga yung CS natin is AS prime multiplied by FS prime? So ayun, so substitute lamang dyan and take note na yung ating gagamitin na FS prime is equal to F sub Y kasi nga nalaman natin na mag yield nga si compression steel. Okay? So kapag kinompute natin guys, take note no, given na yung ating MN2 nandito na nga siya sa ating table no, kasi nakuha na natin siya kanina. Okay? Then, ang ating F sub S prime is equals to F sub Y. Yung ating D at saka D prime are also given na sa problem. Okay? So, ang ibig sabihin nito, makukuha natin guys, si AS prime and that will be 2044.01 square millimeters. Okay. So, ngayon guys, na nakuha na natin si AS prime, then, uh, magdi-decide tayo kung anong bar diameter ang gagamitin natin. So, for example, in this problem, gusto kong gumamit ng 32 millimeter na compression bars. Okay? So, ang gagawin ko lamang, of course, para malaman kung ilang bars, edi AS prime, ito yung required natin na compression steel area, i-divide natin sa area ng isang bar na 32 mm. So, ang mayayari dito is 2044.01 divided by yung area ng isang bar, which is pi over 4 multiplied by 32 squared. Okay? So, ayun. So, balin dito ang lalabas na N or number of bars is 2.54. So, of course, wala namang 0.54 na bar. I-design natin siya as 3. Kaya dapat i-increase, no? Kasi nag-design tayo. Hindi dapat i-decrease. Kasi pag nag-decrease, hindi natin na-satisfy yung ating required na compression steel area. So, balin, no? Tatlong 32 mm na compression bars yung ating kailangan. Okay? So, ayun. So, after that, of course, yung compression uh, steel bars pa lang yung ating na design. So, kailangan ba nating mag-design guys ng uh, tension bars? Okay. So, ngayon, i-compute natin yung required na tension steel area which is AS. So, kailangan nating pumili ulit ng bar diameter for the tension bars and mag-compute na naman ng number of bars. Para sa mga tatanong, no, hindi required na same-same sila ng diameter na, say, na kung ano yung diameter ng compression bars, dapat yun din yung diameter ng tension bars. Hindi, no? Okay lang kahit magkaiba sila ng diameter, guys, no? Okay, tapos, don't worry kung sakaling makakompute ka ng maraming uh, bars, don't worry about sa spacing, guys, kasi may choice ka naman kung gusto mong i-bundle yung ating bars. So, pwede namang mangyari yung bundled bars. So, ayun. So, anyway, so, para sa pag-compute ng ating tension, required tension steel area, so, gagamitin natin tong formula na AS equals to AS1 plus AS2. So, yun na nga, guys, no? AS2 FY. Okay, so, alam natin tong formula na to, no? At AS2 FY is equals to AS prime F sub S prime. So, kaya meron na itong equation na to is because we know that T2 must be equal to compression steel force. Okay? So, ito is equal to this force. So, dapat equate din sila. So, AS2 equals to F, AS2 FY is equals to AS prime FS prime. So, bali no, ang mangyari dito is, of course, yung ating FS prime is equals to F sub Y kasi alam natin na mag-yield yung ating compression steel. So, ibig sabihin nito, kung equal si FS prime at saka si F sub Y, then AS2 will be also equal to AS prime. Okay? So, alam na natin yung AS prime kanina, na computer natin siya, then ibig sabihin, yun na mismo yung ating AS2. So, 2044.01 square millimeter din siya. Okay. So, ngayon na alam na natin guys yung ating AS2. And alam na natin yung ating AS1 kanina. Yung no, ating pag-start pa lang ng pag-compute. Ito yung guys, no? 3318.98. Then, compute natin si AS and that will be 5362.99 
square millimeters. Okay, so ito na mismo guys, yung ating required tension steel area. Okay, so we need to choose the bar diameter and since ako naman yung nag-design dito guys, then I want to choose a 36 millimeter na tension bars. Okay, so of course, no, para malaman natin kung ilang 36 millimeter tension bars yung kakailanganin, so i-compute natin siya, that is A sub S divided by area ng isang 36 millimeter na bar. So ang mangyari dito is of course, 5362.99 na-compute pa lang natin guys yung ating A AS, divided by yung area nga ng isang 36 millimeter na bar is pi over 4 multiplied by 36 square. Okay, so of course, ang ating number of bars dito is 5.27. So of course, wala namang point, point 0.27 na bar. So gagawin natin siya, of course, 6. Kailangan natin siyang i-round up lagi, no? So that will be 6 na 36 millimeter tension bars. Okay, so ngayon na guys, no, ay tapos na nga yung ating design, no? Pero bago natin siya tuluyang i-finalize, no, ay kailangan kailangan natin muna siyang i-analyze. No? So, kailangan natin malaman kung safe ba tong design natin or hindi. Okay. So, ito muna guys yung ating design results. So, basa sa ating design results, we need tatlong 32mm na compression bars and we need 6 36mm na, na tension bars. Okay. So, ngayon guys, no, kailangan natin i-analyze to. So, ano ang gagawin natin sa analysis? We need to prove that it is safe. So, para malaman natin na safe siya, we need to satisfy this. No? That is M sub you must be less than or equal to phi mn. Okay, so of course, guys, no, i-compute muna natin yung ating totoong compression steel area. So after design na to, guys, no, so hindi na natin gagamitin yung AS prime at saka AS na kanina kasi di round up man natin, guys, yung ating mga number of bars. So yung ating totoong area ng ating compression bars is eto, that is pi over 4 multiplied by 32 squared multiplied by 3. So it will be AS prime is equal to 2412.74 square millimeters. Tapos para sa ating AS, that is pi over 4 times 36 square times 6 kasi anim nga sila, okay? Okay, so of course, yung ating area ng ating tension bars is 6,107.26 square millimeters. Okay, so take note guys na yung MU is already given sa problem. No? Para lang klaro tayo guys, hindi natin kinumpute sa MU kasi given na siya sa problem. Diba nga, yung given sa problem, MU nga is 1,225 kN. Okay, so ano na yung gagawin natin next after natin i-compute yung actual na area ng ating mga compression at tension steel bars. So ang gagawin natin guys, no, para sa analysis, take note as analysis na tayo, no? We have to write the equilibrium equation assuming F sub S prime is equals to F sub Y. So, ibig sabihin nito, guys, that we are assuming that the compression still will yield. Okay? So, bali, no, gamawa muna tayo, tayo guys, ng force diagram. So, bali, para sa ating force diagram, of course, we have here the tension force which is ASFY. Tapos, we have here the compression concrete force na 0.85 F sub C prime multiplied by A times B which is located at the center of our compression concrete area. So, ibig sabihin, this will be D minus A over 2, na distance between them. Okay? Tapos, of course, we have the compression steel na force, which is AS prime multiplied by FS prime, and take note that is at a distance D prime from the compression phase. Okay? So, ayun guys, no? so, yung ating ditong equilibrium equation is T is equals to compression concrete plus compression steel na forces. Okay? So, bali, ASFY is equals to 0.85 F sub C prime multiplied by A times B plus AS prime F sub S prime. So, sinabsitute lamang natin dito, guys, yung ating mga values, I mean, yung ating equations uh, dito, no? So, ayun. Okay, so, bali, ang mangyari, take note, guys, we are assuming that F S prime nga is equals to F sub Y. So, ibig sabihin neto, guys, no, pag sinabsitute natin, take note, yung iba dyan ay given na sa problem except yung A, no? Yung F S prime is equal to F sub Y. So, ang mangyayari, of course, makakompute natin si A and A will be equal to 248.37 millimeters. Okay? So, since na-compute na natin, guys, si A, then kailangan natin i-compute na ngayon si C, which is A over beta 1. Okay? So, of course, beta 1 is nakuha na natin siya kanina pa, no? Nauna nating solution, di ba? So, design pa lang, ano natin, alam beta 1 natin is 0.85. So, of course, pag sinabsitute natin siya dyan, then C natin will become 292 2.20 millimeters. Okay? So, ayun. So, ngayon, guys, na nakompute natin si A at saka C, then, we need to find out 
kung tama ba yung ating assumption na mag-yield nga yung ating compression steel. So, para malaman natin yan, hindi kailangan natin i-compute nga si compression steel strain. So, that is epsilon sub S prime. Okay? So, again, gamit itong ating yield, uh, I mean strain diagram. This is 0.003 para sa strain ng concrete. Ito again is the compression steel strain at ito will be our tension strain. Okay, so again guys, no, uh, kapag kayong ating compression steel strain is greater than or equal sa ating yield strain, it means that the compression steel is yielding. Pero kung ating compression steel strain is less than sa ating yield strain, then it means it is not yielding. Okay? So, yun nga guys, no, ratio proportion, itong triangle na red is similar to this orange na triangle. Okay? So, 0.003 divided by C is equals to compression steel strain divided by C minus D prime. So, that is ratio proportion lang guys. Okay? So, again, Compression steel strain dito, it will be 0.002281. So, take note guys, maaaring iba ito sa na-compute natin kanina kasi iba man yung value ng C natin kanina. Diba? Okay. So, yun guys, no? So, ating yield strain is equals to F sub Y divided by modulus of elasticity ng steel. Okay. So, of course, hindi ito magbabago guys kasi constant nga yung ating F sub Y sa ating problem and of course, constant nga yung ating modulus of elasticity ng steel. So, ibig sabihin, no, yung ating yield strain is 0.0021 katulad na na-compute natin kanina guys sa design pa lamang. Okay? So, para sa ating sa compression steel strain, i-compare natin na ngayon siya sa ating yield strain and take note that the compression steel strain is greater than sa ating yield strain. So, it means that the compression steel is yielding. So, ang ibig sabihin na ito, F is prime natin na gagamitin is equal to F sub Y. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin ngayon is i-compute natin yung ating tension strain which is epsilon sub T. So, paano natin siya i-compute? Ratio proportion itong triangle na red is similar to this mas malaking triangle na medyo red na medyo orange no ewan, ewan kung anong kulay diyan okay so bali no ratio proportion guys no itong side na to is tension strain plus 0.003 divided by this side which is the effective depth is equals to 0.003 divided by this side which is c okay so oh, bali no uh, given na yung ating d tapos yung c is na compute na natin guys that is 292.20 so yung ating tension strain dito will be 0.004187 so gamit tong table sa NSCP 2015 Okay, so we know, okay, classify muna natin siya guys, no, it's either compression controlled, transition, or tension controlled, so we know that this is less than 0.005, kasi 0.004187 lang siya. And, okay, so ibig sabihin, maaaring dito siya or dito siya sa compression controlled or transition, okay? Pero take note that our tension strain is greater than the yield strain which is na computer natin to kanina, 0.0021. So ibig sabihin, it means that this is... Uh, this belongs here which means it is transition. So dahil nga transition siya guys, no. Ang gagawin natin is kailangan nating i-compute yung ating value ng phi. So ito yung guys, no, yung ating value ng phi etong nandito sa may dito. Kasi ito is para to sa mga transverse reinforcement na spiral. Okay, so dito tayo guys sa ating pag-compute ng phi. Ayun. So para sa phi that is 0.65 plus 0.25 multiplied by the tension strain minus the yield strain divided by 0.005 minus the yield strain. Substitute lamang guys. So of course, ang lalabas dito is 0.8299. Okay? So ayun. Okay, so ngayon alam na natin guys yung ating phi. So ngayon ang gagawin na lang natin is kailangan natin i-compute nga yung ating nominal moment, no? Kasi nga i-compute natin dito si phi mn. So bago natin i-compute guys si nominal moment or phi mn, then i-compute muna natin guys yung ating uh, AS1 at saka AS2. So take note that AS is equals to AS1 plus AS2. I-compute muna natin guys si AS2. So bali no, take note that galing lang siya dito sa ating equation na T2 must be equal to C sub S. Okay? F sub S prime natin is take note equal to F sub Y kasi nga nalaman natin na it will yield. Okay? So, of course, A sub S2 natin will be equal to A S prime and A sub S2 natin is 2412.74 square millimeters. Okay? So, ngayon na alam na natin guys yung ating A S2. Then, makukuha natin si A S1. Bakit? Kasi alam na natin guys si A S. Diba ito yung total na tension area natin na computer natin sa start ng ating analysis. Okay? So, bali na no, compute natin si A S1 and that will be 3694.50 
52 square millimeters. Okay. So, ngayon, alam na natin, guys, si AS1 at si AS2. Then, pwede na natin makompute, guys, yung ating design moment capacity, which is VMN. Uh, para sa MN, guys, no? MN natin is this, the moment here plus the moment here, which is T1 multiplied by D minus A over 2 plus T2 multiplied by D minus D prime. Okay? So, if VMN natin, guys, is V multiplied yung sum nilang dalawa. Okay? So, ang mangyayari dito is, of course, sa situate lamang, guys, and lalabas 1 billion, 271 million, 324586 newton millimeter. So, of course, kailangan natin i-convert to, to kilonewton meter and that will be equal to 1,271.325 kilonewton meter. Okay, so ngayon guys, no, kailangan natin i-compare nga si MU at saka si VMN. Ayun, so take note no, para ang purpose nito is para malaman natin kung yung design ba natin ay safe or hindi. Okay, so again, yung ating MU is uh, alam na natin yan, given na yan sa problem that is 1225 kilonewton meter. Yung ating VMN is 1271.325 kilonewton meter. And take note, our MU is less than kay VMN. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, the design is safe. So, ibig sabihin, tama yung ating design kasi safe siya nga. Okay? So, tama siya. So, ibig sabihin, guys, para sa ating final answer sa problem na to, no, ito nga yung ating design. Okay? So, I hope na intindihan nyo, guys, yung ating discussion about sa uh, design of doubly reinforced beams. So, kung meron kayong tanong, guys, no, about sa design ng doubly reinforced beams, no, ay i-comment nyo na lang sa comment section nitong uh, video na to dito sa aking YouTube channel and I will answer your questions there. Okay? So, yun guys, no, so uh, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, no, and sana mag-learn pa kayo ng maraming maraming marami pa mula dito sa aking YouTube channel. Thank you and bye-bye!